This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's, you know what that is, right? That's the Christian way of saying, sit down and be quiet. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's great to have you with us today. My name is David Willis. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park United Methodist Church. Um, you are in the middle of our contemporary worship service. Whether you're here, whether you're watching online, we are delighted to have you today. Uh, warm Christian greetings to you. If you're watching online, I'm sure that there will be instructions given to you about how to find one of our bulletins for the day. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a smiley face. Whatever you give on Facebook nowadays, let us know you're there. Let us know where you're watching from. We're honored to have you here in the sanctuary. Uh, your bulletin has a connection card. Please be sure that you separate that, fill that out, drop it in one of the offering plates or in one of the white baskets that you see as you exit the sanctuary. I want to take just a couple of moments today to tell you that we're excited to have you and uh, want to cover a few announcements. And uh, then I want to talk with you a little, uh, kind of briefly, before we move into worship service today. We've got a 2023 summer mission trip to Honduras coming up. It'll be July 24th through the 31st. If the rest of the year goes with the speed that January has gone, that'll be here next week. And that um, trip is filling up fast. Then. Yeah, it is absolutely, man. The, the year is screaming by already. Uh, February communion offering is going to go to support our FP youth and young adult missions. Um, registration opens Sunday, September 6th for the Women's Spring Renewal here at the church. Be sure you read those details. Get ready to sign up for that. Student ministry, young adult ministry, we pray for our youth today as Sam, several chaperones, and several of our youth are should be on their way back from Orlando this morning. They've been at Rock the Universe. We pray for their safe travel. Uh, men's breakfast, Wednesdays, 7 in the fellowship hall. Wednesday night men's Bible study resumes uh, February 8th. Uh, you can pick up one of the books that we're going to be using in Faith's office if you haven't done that already. Women's ministry going strong Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday night, Thursday morning Bible study. Hey, no Wednesday night dinner this week. No Wednesday night dinner. And um, talked with Paula Borgers last night. She said uh, coffee coloring and chit chat has been canceled for this week for senior adult ministry and a record of our faithfulness. So I want to take just a couple of moments and I want to talk with you about the uh, big event that's coming up at the church this afternoon. Uh, four o'clock this afternoon, we have our church conference here. As you know, this will uh, be, I want to take some time to talk with you right now because I'm not going to have an opportunity this afternoon. I'll be here this afternoon. I just won't have the opportunity to talk because it's not my ball game. It'll be the district superintendent's ball game this afternoon. Um, the questions that I've gotten over this past week concern this afternoon. First and foremost, 
yes, we will know the result of the vote that we take this afternoon. I anticipate, that means I really don't know, but I'm going to guess, I anticipate that we will be done here by about 5 o'clock. Uh, the meeting is scheduled to start at 4. That may or may not happen because today, uh, when you come uh, for the meeting this afternoon, you have to sign in. So there are going to be a series of tables set up uh, with uh, alphabetical limiters on them, like A through E or whatever. You go to the appropriate table according to your last name, you sign in. Let me just tell you right now, don't be offended if you come this afternoon and whoever's sitting at that table doesn't know you, if they ask to see your identification, don't be offended. Okay, we are doing the best that we can do to stay in line with the parameters that the conference has set for us regarding this vote. And one of the things the conference says, you have to be a professing member in order to vote. Uh, does that mean you can't come? Like if you're married uh, and your spouse is not a church member, does that mean they can't come? No, they can't come, but you cannot sit together. There will be a voting bar this afternoon, just like at a convention. So the voting bar for this afternoon will be the floor of the sanctuary here, with the exception of those pews directly in front of the sound booth. Those people that are coming uh, that, can, that can't vote and can get in our uh, balcony are going to be invited to sit in our balcony. Those people who uh, can't vote uh, and can't get in the balcony are going to be invited to sit in that uh, section of pews right in front of the uh, sound booth, and we will adjust as we need. Don't take this for granted, folks. Uh, this is a chance for you to voice your opinion, your vote, about how you feel regarding whether we should stay affiliated with the United Methodist Church or whether we should disaffiliate from the United Methodist Church. Here's the good news. When we leave here today, this will be done. And I will be so thankful because we have been sweating and praying and crying and fretting over this for too long. It's time to put it to bed, okay? It will be put to bed this afternoon, finally and completely. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have work to do on the other side. So let me tell you this. Irrespective of the vote this afternoon and the vote's outcome, there will be a church-wide meeting here in the sanctuary next Sunday at 4 p.m. Next Sunday at 4 p.m., regardless of the outcome of the vote today, we will have a church-wide meeting to talk about how we move forward. Whether it's we move forward as a United Methodist Church or whether we move forward as a, a disaffiliated part of the United Methodist Church. We want to be sure that we're all on the same sheet of music and that, that we are all uh, moving forward in the same direction. There will be no celebration this afternoon regardless how the vote comes out. This is a time, unfortunately, uh, of division, and there will be division, uh, again, regardless of how the vote comes out. Um, no clapping, no celebrating, because we're going to be losing members. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, if we vote to stay United Methodist, if we vote to disaffiliate from the United Methodist Church, people will be departing this church based on that vote. So it's not a time for, oh, you know, my side won or, oh, my side lost. It's, it's a time of division, and it is hitting a whole lot of United Methodist churches, not just in this area, but all over the country. I don't know if you've watched the news or not, but it's a pretty popular news story right now, as you can imagine. Um, I will sleep tonight, finally. Lay my head on the pillow and, and sleep without having to worry about this. I've worried about it for too long. I've sweated. It's been a, a stressful time for me, and I know it has for you as well. Let me, let me just say this. Um, I have done my best over the past few months to give you as church members the information you need to make an informed decision about your vote this afternoon. Sometimes I've done okay, yay me, and then sometimes I haven't done as well as I could have, boo me. But I've always tried to be transparent. 
And I've always tried to make sure that you have the information that you need. Where I have failed, I apologize. Where I have succeeded, well, good for me. I hope that you can come this afternoon and feel like you've got enough information to cast your vote according to how you feel God leading you. Um, I would love to be able to take credit for that attitude, but uh, I can't. I have to give credit to our bishop, the Alabama West Florida Conference, David Graves. Um, David Graves is uh, sold out United Methodist. He has uh, set the example for me to lead. He said when this issue came about that his goal was to help individual church members and churches get to where they want to be. And I adopted that as my tact. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing my best to try to help Forest Park get to where it wants to be, irrespective of what I think, irrespective of what uh, the world says is right or wrong. I've tried to be able to give you that information to help you get to where you want to be as a church. So pray as you go home today. Uh, stop and, and take time to, to pray, preferably not while you're driving. Uh, or if you pray while you're driving, don't close your eyes. But at some point in time today, stop and pray that God's will would be done this afternoon. Um, again, I probably won't have a chance to address you unless I lead in prayer this afternoon, but I will be here. And once again, let me state, you will vote, the votes will be counted, and if you choose to stay around, the vote will be announced uh, this afternoon. So it's not going to be like, oh, it's going to be a week before we find out. No, we, we will know this afternoon. And again, no service will be associated with this there's one issue to be taken care of, and that's what we're here to vote on, uh, what we'll be voting on this afternoon. Or I should say what you will be voting on this afternoon. Be in prayer. Thank you for your patience. And let's, uh, let's endeavor to move forward regardless of what happens today. For God's kingdom, pray with me. God, as we move into worship now, it is our prayer that stuff like we've just been talking about would melt away that anything in this world that seeks to separate us from you would fall by the wayside and for these next few moments that we would be able to focus on you we see things going on in our world and we and we scratch our heads yet again this week we've seen natural disasters yet again this week we've seen evidences of, of social injustice we've seen those entrusted to protect us give their worst to those whom they've sworn to protect and we scratch our heads and we wonder why when the truth is right in front of us the truth is that we're human that we're imperfect and that we do things we ought not do God forgive us for that let us now come together and unite to worship you doesn't matter where we're from doesn't matter how much money we've got. Doesn't matter what our political party is. Doesn't matter the color of our skin. What matters is what binds us together, and that is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in this place. We call upon you now to, to give us a fresh outpouring of that Spirit as we worship today. Open our hearts and our minds to your presence. Inhabit our worship and praise that we may leave this place revived to go into the world and do what you've called us to do. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Stand together and worship with us. Thanks for being here. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, and Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you?
praising that he cared. They mocked him and they laughed at him as he was dying there. He said, Father, please forgive them. They don't know why they do. He had forgiveness, grace, and mercy, and the faith to see. to see all of you this morning what a prayer that is i want to be just like jesus that's a big one kind of high standards you know the thing about faith is it's a living breathing growing thing we change as he teaches us and he shapes us and he draws us closer so that we can be more like Jesus in the way we love, in the way we give mercy, in the way we receive those same things. It's those simple things that he plants inside and continues to water and feed and make bigger. So that as we continue in our walk and our faith with him, 
at least for myself, I look up and I think, I look back, I'm like, wow, look how far he brought me. Nothing I did was in spite of me. Look how far he brought me. He wants to do that with all of us. He wants to lead and to guide and he wants us to follow. So to surrender into that, to face the things that are scary, the uncertainty that we face every single day, to have the security of knowing that we can lay that down, and he's got it. We don't have to carry it anymore. He'll pick it up. He's already got it figured out. This next song we've done for a long time, but it's one of my favorites because it takes things down to the most basic level, the very breath in our lungs. Every single breath we take is from Him, is a gift. And all we have to do is receive. Sing with me, worship. Store every heart that is broken. 
You may be seated. Join me in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning in the midst of what feels like chaos sometimes. The world around us gets loud. And it's easy to get distracted and to let your still small voice be drowned out. Lord, give us focus. Focus on you, your plan, your will for every single day going forward. Lord, settle, settle our hearts, our souls. Untangle all of the chaos that the world brings to our door. Give us the ultimate peace that only you can give to the ones that love you and follow you and trust you. When there are questions and few answers, you are the only answer we need. Lord, we love you. We lift our praise to you for you are the only worthy one. Pray that you will bless this church, bless the body inside it. Use us, Lord, to bring glory and honor to you. Bless the tithes and the offerings that are about to be given, that they may be used in a way to further your kingdom, to spread your light to the world. We lift these prayers in the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been really loving Pastor David's sermons following up Christmas, reminding us that <laughs> Christmas is all year round. The gift of God and Christ is ours all year round. It never ceases. It never stops. We celebrate his birth, and then sometimes we just move on to other things. And I think it's important for us to remember that the gift of God at Christmas keeps on giving now and forever. Christmas time is over. Celebrate. 
As usual, a fantastic time in worship today. Thank you to the praise team. Thank you to you for joining us. It's time for children's bread. If the kids will come on down to the altar, we'll see what's going on today. Yes, sir. Got the bag. All right. There you go. Motorized coming up here today. Kind of light today because a lot of the kids are... Got what? You got... Oh, okay, that'll work. Good morning. How are y'all? There he comes. Thank you, kind sir. Well, look here. It's lighted up in there, isn't it? All right, look at that. You see that? I hadn't even reached in there, and it's lighting up. So if you're visiting with us today and you're wondering what's going on, this is uh, children's bread. The kids bring in a bag like this every week, and they put whatever they want to put in there. I don't know what it is. I have to take it out and make a spiritual application with it. they got two rules. Can't put anything living, can't put anything dead in there. But this one... Can't turn it on because... Do it. Make it light up again. Do it do it. There you go. Thank you. That's the way it works with my cell phone. I give it to my son and let him fix it. Fix that. Look, it's lighting up in there. So let's, let's look in there and see what it is. What do you think it is? No? I don't know. Oh, it's one of those things that light up. There's, there's one in every crowd. All right, look at it. Light up ball. So there you go. Look at that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Okay, let me, hang on, I'm not, I'm not through illustrating yet. Give me just a minute. Look, so where are the lights on this thing? Both sides. Both sides, but where are they? Where did you say? They're inside. Yes, sir? You see, there's batteries and light bulbs. I see that. That is awesome. Where are the batteries and the light bulbs, though? Where are they? They're are they outside or inside? They're, they're inside, right? They're it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. See that? Yeah. Everything is on the inside, right? That's kind of like I us. I promise I'll give it back. I promise. Before you go with Mr. Tony for Children's Church, I'll give it back, okay? But I'm going to make it light up. Here's the thing about us and about Jesus. Jesus lives inside of us like this light does. Jesus is the light of the world, and Jesus lives inside of us, inside of our heart, through the Holy Spirit, so that we can go into the world and show the world the light, which is Jesus, that lives inside of us. Why is it important to show people who Jesus is? Yes. Lost your mind, okay. No argument. Yes, sir. I forgot. You forgot, too. You lost your mind too. All right. Here's, here's the reason that we want the world to see Jesus. We want, you know, tell me why. Because he's the one who made us. That's exactly right. Jesus is the one that made us. He is the creator. He's the creator of all. And he lives inside of us and we show him to other people so that they will know who he is and that he is the light of the world like we do. So we are the ones who get to tell other people about Jesus because he lives where? Inside, Inside of us. That's right. Yes, sir. I don't want, I don't want to run out of batteries. Hold your taters. I'm not going to let it run out of batteries, I promise. Okay? I promise. He's worried about it running out of batteries. And it might. But I guarantee you that I've got more batteries. Okay? Not going to run out of batteries, I promise. Just like Jesus ain't going to run out on us. Woo, there you go. That's a good segue. Yes, sir. I have a connection with the battery. Well, I don't know how to phrase it, but um, the battery 
The batteries is like our faith. That's very good. That's, that's an analogy. Can I get that? Good. Good job. You going to grow up and be a preacher? Don't. Someday. Yeah. <laughs> not, not until you learn something else to do first. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so before, before I become a preacher, I'm probably going to be doing what um, Noah usually does. Yeah. Uh, Brother David learned how to be a nurse before he was a preacher. So... All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to, without lighting this up again, we're going to thank God for living inside of us so that we can show the world His light. All right, so pray with me. Pray your hands up. Here we go. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for living inside of us so that we can show the world your light. It helps us to be able to love other people the way you loved us. So that's what we do. Now, God, we love and we thank you so much for giving us life, for creating us and giving us hope. I ask your blessings upon the kids that are with us today, on those kids that are watching online and those uh, who are unable to be with us. Bless them all. Bless their homes and their families. Bless their schools and their teachers. And bless this church as we teach them how to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here you go, sir. One ball back. And I need a young lady to bring the bag. And listen, can you bring it next Sunday? Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that very much. Head on back with Mr. Tony. There we go. And Miss Cat. And there they go. Very, very good. The light of the world lives inside of us. That's a, that's a good, good thing. So for the past few weeks, like Ron said, early, oh, hang on. Um, do you like to shoot golf? Do you like to play golf? I guess you shoot pool, don't you? shoot around of golf. Uh, we have the Emerald Coast Missions fundraising golf tournament that's going to be coming up Saturday, February um, 18th. Uh, you can get in touch with Faith here at the church or you can get up with uh, Lee Anderson. Lee will uh, gladly help you with that. Or Ron, either one. It is for Emerald Coast Missions and I know that they would appreciate your help. And uh, playing a round of golf is a good thing, but when a round of golf helps missions, it's a better thing. We've been talking about for the past few weeks, like Ron talked about, about Christmas when it's not Christmas. Okay. I've been talking about that timeline, how Jesus is coming literally split time in two, right? We've got B.C., we've got A.D. How that coming, how that Christmas split time in two, and why Christmas and that timeline matters year-round. Why does Christmas matter, as we have said ad nauseum, why does Christmas matter in September just like it does in December? We've really, really kind of been homing in on that, and for the past few weeks, we've covered some very, very important topics surrounding that particular idea. The very first thing we said was this, that, that Christmas, year-round, it's important to us because it brings uh, to us a new idea of freedom and relationship. Freedom and relationship, that's what Christmas ushers in. It ushers in for us a freedom, and it ushers in a restored relationship with God. So that's really good. That's really, really good. It was so good. In fact, the second week, we said that Christmas ushers into us a, a different understanding of value. You remember talking about that? We said the world values in a particular way, but God values in a totally and completely different way. And he has said to us that it doesn't matter what the world says you are. It doesn't matter what the world says you're worth. God has ascribed your value and my value in a different way. He has said that we are so valuable that we were worth the life of his one and only son to be restored to him through Jesus' shed blood. So value, Christmas matters now just like it did in December because Christmas ushers in a different understanding of value than last week we talked about the idea of, of lifestyle, how it is that Jesus changes us so much that, that we're able to do what we were talking to the kids about. Go outside the walls of the church, be the church, and share with the world exactly what it is to be um, possessed of use that term a little, with a little trepidation, to be possessed of the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to walk outside the walls of the church and let Jesus come to light, come to life, and work within you? And, and this week I want to talk with you a little bit as we wind this particular sermon series down 
I want to talk with you about uh, Christmas bringing to us year-round a different sense of purpose. A different sense of purpose. And for you and for me, what that means is this. It means that we have been given a charge because Christ came into the world, because of Christmas, we have been given a charge. And guess what? Just like Jesus came and split time in two, just like he went to the cross and was resurrected on the third day, before he ascended back into heaven, he gave to us that idea and that sense of purpose. Now, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago that, um, you know, I, I like to build scale models, you know, not cars, but, but tanks and, and an occasional airplane, different things like that. So I communicate with a bunch of other scale modelers. There just aren't that many scale modelers anymore. But I, I communicate with a bunch of different scale modelers um, via Facebook and, and the Internet through different kind of clubs that we have. Uh, and one of the things that I noticed about us, uh, other than the fact that the overwhelming majority of people who still build scale models, the overwhelming majority of us are old white dudes. I don't know what the deal is there, but that's just it. The overwhelming majority of the people that build scale models anymore are older white guys. And don't know why. Maybe it's because we remember them from our childhood and they're just not that much in vogue anymore. I don't know. One of the other things that brings us together is a um, sense of nostalgia around the toys that we played with when we were kids. So every once in a while, somebody will post, hey, look, on one of these modeling with, look what I found. And I will look, and it will be a toy from my youth or back in the, the 40s and 50s, and I will think, if I gave that to a child today, they would put me in jail. Do, do you remember candy cigarettes? There used to be candy cigarettes. I, I don't know if you know that or not. And they were horrible. I mean, they would break your teeth out. They were so hard. But I wanted candy cigarettes and bubblegum cigars. I wanted those because of what my dad had. You, you remember um, um, Shrinky Dinks? I think we've talked about Shrinky Dinks before. You remember Shrinky Dinks? My older brothers had Shrinky Dinks. And you had to, it, it, a Shrinky Dink is a, a little imaginary creature that, that you could literally make inside of this thing. You had, you had two ways that you could make it. You could pour the liquid inside of this thing that you plugged into the wall and that heated up enough to set your house on fire <laughs> and made a Shrinky Dink. Or, or, you could put it in there and then put it in the oven. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And, and my brother, I remember my oldest brother had what we called a, a Shrike. Um, and it was a car, but it had the same engine in it that the, the planes, you know, that you fly around on. You got to fill that thing up with flammable liquid. And for me, one of the things, though, that I remember that I really like about that idea of nostalgia and, and seeing the evolution of toys that, that, that goes on even in today is they all gave a sense of purpose. The most popular toys, the ones that we remember the most, gave us a sense of creativity. They gave us a sense of purpose. They helped us know that we were capable and that we had potential to have a big purpose. For me, my potential was realized, the toys that I'm thinking about and that I'm talking about now, for me, when I think about that, I, I remember Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys. Okay? Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys. You want a babysitter? Turn the TV off. Dump out some Tinker Toys. Those things gave us the ability to create, and they gave us a sense of purpose. Nowadays, as you watch the evolution of, of toys that kids play with. I'm sure you can still find Tinker Toys and Lincoln Log somewhere. But now kids are, are playing the same kind of thing just like on a video game or on uh, you know, a, a smartphone. Uh, Minecraft. When you play uh, computer games now, there's almost always a sense of you have to build and manage resources of some kind. All of these things are all designed to give us a sense of purpose. 
And it doesn't matter how much time changes, that same mindset is always there. Jesus did the same thing for us. Christmas is important, and Christmas ushers in what we're about to talk about. Christmas ushers in, like we always say, Easter. But without Christmas, there would be no Easter. We've been saying that. But Jesus gave us purpose. And he, he did that in a bunch of different ways. But the most profound way he did that was right before he ascended from the earth back into heaven. So it's not just any Jesus. It's not the old Jesus giving us this purpose. This is the resurrected Jesus. I am, of course, talking about what, what we know as the Great Commission. If you've been in Christian circles you're, uh, for any length of time, you've heard of the Great Commission. It's found at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. And, and that's where we're going to light in the Scriptures today. So if you have your Bibles, will you turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28? And we're going to be reading just a few of those sentences that give us an idea of the purpose that Christmas ushers in for us. Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20 say this. Then the 11, remember there were only 11 disciples now, because uh, Judas had hung himself for betraying Jesus. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And, and here's the purpose, the purpose of Christmas. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. That, that is essentially Jesus saying to me and to you, here you go. Here's a brand new box of Legos. Here's a brand new box of Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs and dumping them out before us and saying, this is my representation here on earth. You're my representation here on earth. Go and do. And he sets up parameters for us to do that. And the parameters that he sets up to, to do that are, are God's word. God says, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to accomplish. And here are your boundaries. Your boundaries for discovering your purpose in this world was ushered in through Christmas and the boundaries that exist now is the truth of your word. You bring this in. You do what I've called you to do using my word as the boundary. Your limits are the world. Go in all the world. Go to every tribe and every nation. And that's important to you and that's important to me because they ain't none of us here are Jews, right? I've said that to you before. None of us are here are Jewish that I know of. That's important to you and me that the risen Jesus said that because he opens the gospel up, the power, its availability. He opens it up from just the nation of Israel and offers it to even the Gentiles, which, if you don't know, that's us. If you're not Jewish, you're Gentile, according to Jews. If you're not Jewish, you're Gentile. So Jesus didn't just come for Israel. He didn't just come for people of Jewish faith. He came for all of us. And that's what this purpose does. Christmas ushers in this sense of purpose. And he gives to us the tools that we need to do, again, what I was talking to children about, showing his light to the rest of the world. And there's one way that Jesus can be known in this world now and that is through his followers there's gonna come a day 
when he's going to be made known because he's going to split the eastern sky wide open. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. But until that time, me and you, tag, we're it. You got your, um, you got your bulletins with you. There's a really neat, uh, really neat excerpt on the front of your bulletin that I want to share with you. Everybody have that on their bulletin, the indescribable gift? Is that on your bulletin today? On the back? Okay. Great words. I'm sure many of you have heard this from Roy Lesson. Listen to this. God's indescribable gift is, is Jesus Christ. All that our hearts have ever desired, every need we face, every truth we seek, and every blessing we long for is found in Jesus Christ. In him we see that we see all that God wants to reveal to us. We we walk in all God has prepared for us. We experience all God has planned for us, and we receive all God wants us to be in the person of Jesus. He is the fountain that quenches our thirst, the bread that nourishes our souls, the light that dispels our darkness, the physician that heals our wounds. Jesus is the shepherd that guides our steps. He is the counselor that gives us wisdom, the word that establishes us in truth, the faithful one that gives us security. He is the door, is Jesus, that gives us access to the Father and the way that leads us home. What a love, what a savior, what a gift. Beautiful words. You never heard that before. I encourage you to save that. Those are very, very encouraging words. That is the essence of Christmas. And in those few words, he has said to us what we've come to realize, I hope, over the past few weeks. That Christmas gives to us exactly what we need that we can't earn for ourselves. Everything we need, everything we want, everything we desire wrapped up in swaddling clothes in a manger. And um, sometimes... Sometimes we, we kind of lose sight of that. I want to say this, and I want to say this very, very carefully, because I want, you to hear, I want you to hear my heart, not just the words of what I'm about to say. Jesus' presence in your life, Jesus' presence in my life, cannot be equated with an adrenaline rush, it cannot be equated with tears shed. It cannot be equated, or I should say, I guess a, a better adjective would be, Jesus' presence in our life cannot be marked by any one or all of these things. Can his presence in our life bring these things to us? Yes. But do you have to experience one of these physical manifestations to know that you're in God's presence? Absolutely not. You know why? Because of the, the three O's, right? God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omniscient. He knows everything, right? Mm, um, yep, mm -hmm. He's all-powerful, right? All of these things omniscient, omnipresent. He's everything that we need wrapped up into one. And you may think, if he's all these things, then where is he? Because my life right now stinks. If he's all of these things, if he's everywhere, if he knows everything, and if he is all-powerful, then, then where is he at? Because my life is, man, it is circling the drain. And maybe, maybe it's not that desperate for you. Maybe you're just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a dry spell. I wonder why God doesn't lift me up. My favorite joke to share with you. Um, kind of relates to this old man, old woman, been married 60 years. They're celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary by going out in the same old pickup 
that the man was driving when they went on their first date. Old school pickup, bench, front seat, and they're driving down the road, ladies sitting here, man's driving, just like always. And she looks over at the man and she says, honey, how come we never sit together like we used to when we were first dating? And you know the punchline because I've told you this a gazillion times. He looks over at her and he says, honey, I haven't moved, right? If you're sitting there and you're wondering where God is, somebody has moved, but it ain't God. Because not only is God the three O's, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? If you've ever had somebody break up with you, been in a relationship with somebody, you've had them break up with you, and they give you that old breakup line, it's not you, it's me. That stings. If you're in a relationship with Jesus and things are, are running dry, he's not looking to break up with you. But if you ask him why things are dry and, and where he is, be prepared to hear him say something very similar to that to you. Except he's not going to say, hmm, it's not you, it's me. He's going to say, it's not me, it's you. Those are tough words to hear. But when Jesus speaks those words to your heart, he's saying it with love. I haven't moved. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And moreover, like my scripture says, if you seek me, I will be found. Christmas ushers in that type of God over and over and over and every day we celebrate Christmas because that's what Christmas brings to us a God who wasn't satisfied just to give us life and hope and a second chance but a God who loved us so much that he took it upon himself to put on this meat suit and come down and walk mile in our shoes and then that even wasn't enough he gave himself up for our sin this is what Christmas ushers in. This is why Christmas matters in May, just like it does in December. And this is why there's a timeline. This is why Christmas split time into two. I invite you today to reflect upon your idea of Christmas and understand that the concept of Christmas cannot be constrained to one season a year. It can't be jammed into one day. It can't be jammed into one month. It can't be jammed into 12 days. It has to be lived in our hearts every single day. Rejoice in knowing that it can be. Pray with me. I, uh, Father, don't like hearing that it's my fault. the youngest of four boys it usually was my fault but I never liked hearing it and I can't imagine that I'm alone but God if we're wondering why Christmas matters now if we're wondering where you have gone speak to our hearts solemnly this morning that simple truth tell us it's not me child it's you and just like the prodigal son as he returned to his father let us find you running toward us with your arms open wide ready to welcome us back ready to celebrate Christmas with us once again now heavenly father we surrender everything to you that separates us 
We surrender all of our trials and troubles. We surrender all of our sleepless nights. We surrender our addictions. We surrender our shortcomings. We surrender our pornography use. We surrender our overspending. We surrender our gossip. We surrender our jealousies and our pettiness. We surrender everything within us that is less than humble. And we lay them at your feet. And we ask that you reawaken the joy of Christmas in our hearts once again. And that you let us look forward to the celebration of Easter every Sunday. For in those two events, you have indeed ascribed to us our worth. For our prayer, we offer them through Jesus. Amen. Friends, as is the standard, we're going to open the altar. If you need to come forward and pray, please feel free to do so. I'll be happy to meet you here and pray with you. If not, sit quietly for a few minutes, and uh, I'll come in just a bit and pronounce a benediction. Thank you, Ron. Would you stand for the benediction, please? Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please be in prayer for our meeting this afternoon, and uh, we hope to see you there. Receive this benediction. May the God of all creation cause his uh, face to shine upon you. Let his countenance rest upon your shoulders and go with you every step of the way. Go into the world now to bring his truth to the world in and through the power of the Spirit and with the love of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming.